I think the thing I like the most about it is it gives us a pattern. I like patterns. I like to know uh, what's happening, what I should be doing before you go <clears throat> into marriage. To have a pattern and to know what it should look like takes away some of the guesswork right at the very beginning. How I see my marriage benefit from this passage is it shows me how to best advocate for myself with my husband. When there's something going on and I want him to hear my thoughts on something, when I respect him first and give him that honor, um, then he respects me and he wants to hear my voice and he definitely considers my voice much more so than if I nagged or criticized or insisted on my own way. And I feel better afterwards and he feels better and it's, it's better for our marriage, it's better for me. And even if it doesn't affect him maybe in a way that I would want it to, it's I still feel better if I know that I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm submitting to God and I'm not just trusting in my husband's decisions, but I'm ultimately trusting that God's going to work things out the way that he needs to. I think too, anytime you have two people in any kind of relationship together, um, whether it's personal relationship or business relationship, family relationships, uh, friendships where you both have something you should do, who's the first to do it? Um, it's difficult to obey, but it's also difficult to honor. And the husband is called to honor the wife. Who's going to do it first? I think it. The wonderful part of, of a marriage is that you're not doing it alone and that you have this partner and you have to be kind of on the same page. One thing that, that is great in our relationship is my wife has always encouraged and actually has often desired to, to step back. Um, you know, whereas it might be, um, you know, thinking, hey, let's do um, worship at home and encouraging me to lead that at home or um, you know, um, when we do our, our nightly prayers, and she often will will kind of let me lead our nightly prayer. Um, so different areas that that, that I know um, her personality is to kind of take charge of a situation, but I I know that she tries to kind of pull back a little bit and let me try and step in, and and that's kind of um, something that I think um, as my myself and then a lot of men we need to try and do is try to take more. Uh, more ownership. It's a little bit about the being equally yoked or unequally yoked and, and how a woman should, through her gracious manner and her love of the Lord, act in such a way that the husband may be drawn in. And that's kind of what our marriage started out as, with Shelley being a believer and me not, is growing into that, her mannerisms, her graciousness, and uh, a lot of hard work from the Lord finally brought me into that. But when God's involved, He takes it and He He will bless it if you involve Him in your marriage. And He'll take something that has a little fruit and He'll make it into something that, that will help glorify Him to, to those around you, to your children. Those people will be able to see the blessing that God is giving because of His involvement. Um, well, one, one thing that comes to mind with this dynamic is I... I'm grateful that I'm not the one that leads our family. And I didn't always think that way or feel that way, but um, having been married now for almost nine years and having kids and just going through the thick of life, I feel protected. I mean, my husband has claimed that role as the protector of our family, and it's so comforting, and I know that it's a huge burden. And I would probably really struggle if that burden were really on my shoulders. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't times where I step in and really support him and, and be there for him and, um, you know, make helpful suggestions and comments. Um, but knowing that at the end of the day, he is going to lead our family and, and even more so he's trusting God to lead our family. It's just... It's, it's easier on me, I mean, honestly. I'm sure that is a very hard role to be in. Equality between men and women. 
I've probably had many struggles with that since uh, being a high school student, um, very academically oriented, um, going on to college and then grad school, uh, business school, getting a job as an operations analyst, um, working with 12 men, and I was the 13th analyst, uh, going out to work in different places. We worked at Henry Ford Hospital and they would lend us out to other hospitals and places around the state. The state. And every place we would go, there would be people who would mistake me for the secretary. The most pleasing times during those experiences were, were when the other male analysts uh, spoke to the person who had assumed I was the secretary and honored and protected the weaker vessel. Um, I was very uncomfortable with how I'd been treated at various times and these other analysts, not that this was like a marriage, but it was me working with um, men and, and they were protective, honoring me, which was a gift to me. I've experienced that in my marriage to a, a level that's beyond anything I could have ever uh, experienced in the working world or in school or any place outside of my home with a husband who honors in that same way, honors my gifts, honors um, my concerns, honors everything that the Lord would want him to honor and the way I see him honoring even more is when I'm humble and submissive. Not submissive that I don't speak my mind. Those of you that know me probably can't imagine me not speaking my mind, but not demanding that I have everything my own way and Walt is, he's a blessing God's given me to help me overcome those uh, needs I had for honor from the outside world early on.